24-7s on the road with the Springbok 7s is brought to you by APSA, sponsors of Springbok Rugby. Happy New Year to all our Blitzbok fans. In this first episode of 24-7s in 2015, we reflect back on an amazing end to 2014 when the Springbok 7s not only won back-to-back -back cup titles, but also defended their Salsi Nelson Mandela Bay 7s title successfully. Join us on this journey to success with that special group of players and management that are the Springbok 7s family. Dubai is a remarkable city and remains one of the players' favorite stopovers. For 45 years now, it has been home to the Emirates Dubai Sevens and word is that from 2015, when a 10 tournament series will be introduced, Dubai will again host the first tournament of the World Sevens Series as it did until five years ago. Dubai early morning and still dark as the sun rises a bit later in the winter in the desert. Outside the tournament hotel, the Springbok Sevens waiting for their bus, which had been slightly delayed. A few nerves as it is the knockout stages of the event, but the Bok team management did make provision to arrive at the venue well in time before the quarterfinal. The venue, called The Sevens, is a 40-minute drive into the desert with some of the players relaxing ahead of what would be a long and eventful day. Day one proved to be a very successful day for Neil Powell and his team. Portugal, Canada and Wales were disposed of as the box reached the quarterfinals with ease. The massive crowds at the Emirates Sevens though were not prepared for or expecting what happened next. The box gave an indication of their form when they blew Argentina off the park in the quarterfinal. Up next, New Zealand in the semis. South Africa have got the penalty, quickly taken by Frankie Horn. Back inside it goes, yes, Quacker Smith. He'll open the scoring. Brilliant start for South Africa. Parker Smith is third try here in Dubai, 14th in his career. Mickelson is charging out to cover the territory. That's good play from Paul Mickelson. But it's up Smith has got his second. This is a great start by South Africa. Uh, Frankie Horn was playing in the NBA, he'd have two assists. Another turnover to South Africa. De Freer on De Beer in the pot. Now another chance here. Bucker Smith could get a hat trick. Here he goes. What a try. A remarkable performance by the box. A hat trick by Guaja Smith against the men in black who were kept scoreless. But there was little time to reflect or bask in the glory of this. It was back to the change room where the team started the process of preparing themselves mentally for the cup final against Australia. And a last word of advice from coach Neil Powell. Listen to that atmosphere in Dubai. Australia versus South Africa in the final for the first time ever in Dubai. They played in three finals over the years. You might hear more of it. Now it's Quagga Smith. And Quagga Smith! Oh, what a step! And Quagga Smith is in! He'll put him down between the sticks. A hat trick in the semi final. And now the first to score in the final with Australia. A man down. Now it's out to Holland and Clark. The double round. No, it's been cleaned up, but they're under some pressure, the Australians. No, it's a turnover, and there's a try. A try. So a nervous mistake from the Aussies. And they pay for it early in the second half. Now, Philip Schneeman. So South Africa. Throws in, and it's been won by the Blitzbocker. And now uh, the kick ahead for Sanatla to chase. Jelladev, look at the speed of Sanatla! Oh! Brilliant stuff, Siobalo. Sanatla. He looked like he got it. Oh. I think I'll give it. <laughs> Thank you, Will. Yeah. No problem. So, that's a very timely try again for South Africa. Now it's 
Hitchcock. Jeladev holds on. Back to Brown. Brown. Set up left on the corner. He's got a double. And I think South Africa have a title in Dubai. Typical Confoli run just takes it into contact, but now they turn it over. And here is another one. It is Ruhan now, so they're running away with it now, South Africa. We asked the question at the start, Scott Hastings. Kick it into touch and start celebrating. Kyle Brown now kicks it into touch. Congratulations, South Africa. Champions in Dubai in 2014. A truly impressive performance by the Springbok Sevens and probably the most dominant display on a second day of a tournament by any team in many years. In three matches they scored 101 points, this included a hat-trick by Guaja Smith, while Siebelo Senatla ended as top scorer with seven tries. The box conceded only one try on a day where their defensive effort was massive. I think last year we came close to losing against Fiji in the final and um, yeah, I guess with uh, great blessings we, we went all the way this year so we we're very happy about it and you know, a great bunch of guys that pulled together over the weekend and just, just fought hard for each other and for South Africa. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that one and it was more because of the manner in which we did it. You know, the, the way we were so clinical today from the quarterfinal to the semi to the final um, was you know, just, just a different team altogether and um, the amount of attitude and energy that the guys showed in the defensive line was, was really showing a lot of character and what, uh, what they're made of out there. Oh, it's been a while since we won here. Yeah. I mean, we you know and we played in the final last year, so and and we couldn't seal the deal. But I mean, this is pretty special. I mean, we, quality youngsters that we have and guys that come off the bench. I mean, this, the phenomenal impact they made was just was just superb. And to finish it off like this was was pretty phenomenal. Uh, it's a great feeling uh, to play with guys like Branko and Cezal and them, all the senior guys. It's a it's a nice opportunity for me, first of all. And yeah, it's a great feeling to win the tournament and to score a debut try as well. So yeah, I'm looking forward for, for the next few tournaments. The Springbok Sevens, champions of the Emirates Dubai Sevens for a third time. Werner Koch, player of the tournament and along with Kwaja Smith and Branko Dupria in the dream team. South Africa's 18th tournament victory on the World Seven Series. In true tradition of the Springbok Sevens team, they did not allow themselves any time for celebrations. There was another tournament just a week away. Early morning, just hours after winning the Emirates Dubai Sevens, they were in the pool for a recovery session. Work for their home tournament, the Nelson Mandela Bay Sevens, had already started. The celebrations came later that day in the form of a true South African experience at a South African restaurant in Dubai, the Meat Company. The players were treated to a steak meal, the only indulgence of the week as their diets and food intake is strictly monitored. If you can't pop the champagne, then what better than a steak to celebrate a tournament victory with the iconic Burj Al Arab as a backdrop. It's, it's a wonderful us when we arrive in Dubai to be welcomed to a proudly South African restaurant. Um, for the last couple of years we've been invited to have dinner with them on the first Monday when we arrive in Dubai. And um, it was wonderful when they contacted us and said, listen, they'd love to give us a celebration dinner. And uh, that's where we are right now. So we, we're really grateful to, to the meat company for, uh, for hosting us this evening and we're really looking forward to a wonderful dinner. It's an absolute pleasure for us to uh, host the, the, the Sevens Champions. Obviously, we're very proud of our uh, South African heritage here at Meat Company. And over the, the years, we've always had a, a strong link with the, the South African team. No, it's something we're very, very proud of. And we just want to wish them the very best and congratulations and for the, the rest of the Sevens season. After the rest day in Dubai, it was back home and the Blitzbox, along with all the other teams, arrived late Monday evening for the South Sea Nelson Mandela Bay Sevens tournament. And the box, of course, received a huge welcome from the PE fans. As defending champions and winners of the Emirates Sevens, they arrived in the friendly city as favourites to win back-to-back -back titles. If the turnout at the Wednesday's signing session hosted by the team sponsors APSA was any indication of the support the Box Sevens could bank on, then the Blitzbox were guaranteed of massive support over the weekend. Hundreds of supporters pitched up at the session held in Bethelsdorp on the outskirts of Port Elizabeth, surprising some of the newcomers in the squad. It's my first signing session in the home country and um, it's awesome to see you know, the public coming out and supporting the team. And, um, 
it just makes it that much easier on the field, you know, getting that one percentage in the small stuff, you know, with a, a country like this behind you, it's, it makes your jobs only, you know, so much easier. Uh, it's been an amazing build-up. The, the team have constantly proved that they can get better and better after each game. So, uh, following their performance from last week, uh, really looking forward to some exciting rugby from the boys. And I think uh, looking forward to uh, Rio 2016, it's going to be amazing. It was an extremely busy week for the Box Sevens. A home tournament has different challenges with the team in massive demand from the public and sponsors. Not that they minded at all, they were only too happy to meet with their fans and the sponsors. A dinner hosted by Essex, the team's technical apparel sponsor, provided a welcome breakaway from the team hotel. From an Essex point of view, it's just amazing to spend time with the guys. I think they've been performing a, a, amazing around the world and um, they're really an inspiration to, I think, most of South Africa. And just to spend a little bit of quality time, get our retailers, getting in touch with them, getting our local media, our partners, you know, just being part of a team and, and, and really getting Essex part of, of the whole chaos of the Salsi Nelson Mandela Bay Sevens. Coming up, all the drama, insight and action from Port Elizabeth. Welcome back to 24 Sevens and we are still in Port Elizabeth building up to the Salsi Nelson Mandela Bay Sevens. In between their training sessions, the Blitzbox were busy meeting fans and the public. Coach Neil Powell, Cheslin Colby and Philip Snayman surprised ABSA staff at their head offices in Port Elizabeth to interact with the people in the engine room of the sponsors. I think it's a great experience for us as players coming out to experience the working lifestyle of the ABSA staff and just seeing the, the order they put in behind the scenes and what that has to be done for EPSA and all the other members part of EPSA. It's just a great honor and a great privilege just seeing what they have to do to make a successful out of the business. And I was quite a surprise to see how much people watch the Bliss Poker play and how they enjoy the Sevens rugby lifestyle. So I think you don't know that much, but most people watch the rugby, so it's quite a surprise. Yeah. That evening, the team sponsors APSA hosted the entire Springbok Sevens group for an informal dinner. Players interacted with clients and APSA staff, while Captain Kyle Brown and Coach Neil Powell took part in a very entertaining and informative Q&A session. Those meeting the Box Sevens players and staff for the first time were mightily impressed. It was fantastic. I mean, a great bunch of guys, really informal but really humble. Yeah, there's no stuff there. They're a really great bunch of guys, good friends, and they're clearly having fun. Very determined, very passionate, and completely motivated. It's wonderful to have them here. And they put it all in. It's commitment, it's training, it's conditioning. I mean, these guys, in terms of what they do on the field, they know their stuff. Technically, they, they are really there. Their processes are perfect. They get it right, and in that way, they do prosper. Absolutely, they do. The build-up to their home tournament was as much a physical as it was a mental challenge. There were many off-the-field distractions which the Blitzbox attended to with their usual enthusiasm. On the field, it was a huge battle getting the players to focus after their win in Dubai. Enter the team's mental guru, Dr. Yanni Boeta. So if you win the tournament, you will be at five, okay, mentally. You'll be at a big high. If you lose the tournament, you'll be at minus five. That are extremes. If you win, you lie on your back, you enjoy life, you have a big party, but only for 24 hours. Because after 24 hours, you rejoice it. If you lose, you go lie under the bed, you don't watch TV, you don't talk to anybody. You must feel it, how bad it is to lose. Okay, losing is not nice. But here's the point. So that happens Sunday, you're on the rock Sunday, you must consciously get back to naught somehow. You must get back to a place of naught where you are ready to do the hard work again. So the thing that must get you from there to there must be something conscious. You must know what you're doing that gets you from five, head in the air, to back to earth, hard work. 
And when the Box 7s look back at their win in PE, the session with Doc Yanni would be the one identified as where they turned it around and got back on track. The Box 7s were extremely fortunate, having come through the Emirates Dubai 7s without any injuries, and the same group of 12 players was selected. For Branko Dupria, a milestone 35th tournament. For me personally, it's a special feeling and to be part of this team and looking forward to this weekend, uh, uh, just uh, looking forward to uh, have great fun on the, on the field and be with this bunch of guys. Whenever we, we okay. come home, we, we're treated with such a hospitable crowd of people and they've, they've looked after us so well in PE this week. You know, just at the, the signing sessions alone was really something to, you know, to admire and, and how many people were there and so much passion that they showed. Um, we're, we're, we're incredibly excited to run out to, on, on the field against uh, you know, USA on, on, on Saturday afternoon and knowing that the crowd's going to be there and, and have our back and look after us well. And PE couldn't wait. The win in Dubai boosted the already high anticipation and excitement and ticket sales had skyrocketed. The start of the tournament, a beautiful Saturday morning in Port Elizabeth, the proverbial calm before the storm. While the Blissbox arrived at the stadium, fans were already streaming through the gates. A record attendance was on the cards. Opening day of the South Sea Nelson Mandela Bay 7s and a potentially difficult group starting against the USA, then Kenya before Wales in the last match of the evening. The USA were taken care of 26-7. For the Kenya match, we joined the Blitzbox friends, families, wives and girlfriends in their box from where they watched and supported. And they did not need to be so tense. The box disposed of Kenya 38-7. But nice to see how the families lived through every moment of the match. Oh, that's a very well-placed kick. Quacker Smith couldn't get it. But, uh, rather, uh, Werner Koch couldn't get it. Carl Brown did. Now, a first carry for Sanaka. Look at the pace of the man. Takes it over the halfway line. Can he go all the way here? Oh, what a start. Sayabello Sanafla is a flying machine. After the 36-0 win over Wales to top their pool, the Box 7s received a surprise but very welcome visit from the Minister of Sport, Mr. Figile Mbalula. The Minister congratulated the team on their win in Dubai and their performances on the opening day. He had encouraging words for them going into the second day and is clearly their number one fan. This is the culture we have now in our country of a winning nation. Every team coming to the party, but the Blitzbox have never disappointed. Over time, we just had a fantastic year, among others, in the Commonwealth Games because of the gold. And if you saw how they won that gold against the best, in particular New Zealand, you will realize this is Operation Demolition. <laughs> Day two and the box received a fantastic send-off by the staff of the Garden Court Kings Beach Hotel. His hospitality towards all the teams is unsurpassed on the entire circuit. This was a day where the box had to show great determination and heart. In both the quarter-final against England and in the semi they had to come from behind. So Rodwell standing off, now Mitchell. Looking again for big Alex Gray but oh, it's been picked up by Sinatra. This could be and a good bye. It's a big chase there from Norton, but the bullet train is going home. And it's a wonderful finish. Something England could have ill afforded at half time. So great opportunity. Carl Brown is on. And Dupria is in, in the corner. A man down, but they were still good enough. To steal a tie, let's have a look. Oh, listen. Looks pretty good from that angle. Try time to South Africa. Into the final, amazingly New Zealand again for a second consecutive year. Very few teams manage to win their home finals and even fewer manage back-to-back -back victories. The atmosphere was incredible. The rest was history, but still worth watching over and over again. Right on the edge of where the rules are laid out is DJ Forbes. He's such a competitor. Look at the tackle completion. South Africa 82, New Zealand 80. These are two good defensive units. And very aggressive at the breakdown. 
So South Africa then with a the penalty. Oh, Quickly well, taken by play. Africa. The element of surprise is sought. And maybe it's found as well. Here comes Snowman. South Africa's first try. How close is that? Can South Africa get over? Here comes Frankie Horn. Eventually lets it out, but uh, New Zealand very good on defence on that occasion. But it's another penalty to South Africa. Number two. Here comes Africa. Decides to go himself. Has he got it down? Yes, he has. A remarkable try that from Africa. Sit. But it's Gillies Cocker with the longer pass. There's the kick coming from New Zealand. Both teams might well use that tactic as this game progresses. Branko de Priya, straight down the middle. Well won there by Quacha Smith. This guy is unbelievable. He's not the biggest man, but here comes the jet shoes. The bullet train. Can he get out his man? Salakla! Salakla! Yes, he can! South Africa happy not to contest it, but just to stand off, make sure that they've got their defensive organisation right. Kaka, it's a loose ball. Actually, it's picked up by Sam Vaka. Inspired decision by Gordon Titchens to bring him onto the field, but it's been taken away by South Africa. He has the stepping here, we're talking about Bob Skinster. He has a chance for South Africa now. Savaka's decided to go on his own. A brilliant pickup from Klopp. An equally good one, here comes Quokka Smith! My goodness, South Africa, four tries! The prayers are being said there by the likes of Siobhala Sinatra. The man who's going to kick it out will be Reno Benjamin, and South Africa have won the final. What an incredible final it's been to. And who can argue with four tries against three? New Zealand showed a lot of pluck and a lot of fight. And the two tries from Joe Weber certainly kept them in the game. But the spread once again of tries from the Blitzbocker, Philip Snowman won, Cock won, Cecil Africa won, and Siobhala Sinatla continuing his merry way in crossing the try lines. I think not just this tournament, but the last weekend in Dubai as well. I think um, the guys really almost lived or played all our team values of brotherhood, fighting spirit, uh, work ethics, all those things, diversity, leadership, all those things that's important to us and that's, that's our values uh, when we're back in Stellenbosch that actually left out there on the field uh, over the last two weekends. Uh, I haven't been out on the field where a team has fought so hard for a victory in a long, long time. And, uh, you know, the maturity and the composure that they showed out on that field and the guys, you know, the way they worked for each other, was really, really something special. The tournament was a personal milestone for Cecil Africa as well. Not only was he included in the dream team along with Werner Koch, Quacha Smith and Siabelo Senatla, but he also overtook the legendary Fabian Juries as the all-time highest point scorer for the Springbok Sevens. He's now on 939-14 ahead of Fabian. It was a special moment, a better thing for me. I wanted to do the golden, to break Fabian's record. For me, I just want to go then, to contribute to the team and make the team successful at the end of the day. Back at the hotel, Saru's vice president, Mark Alexander, and team sponsors, APSA, hosted an informal but intimate celebration. APSA's Roscoe Bowman congratulated the team on their magnificent performance over the two weeks. The Box 7's team, true ambassadors for their sponsors, the Springbok 7's jersey, their families, and the entire South Africa. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Back-to-back -back victories put the Blitzbox on top of the standings of the Sevens World Series, a handy eight points ahead of Fiji, who failed to make the Cup semis in the last two tournaments. The secret will now be to sustain the momentum as many teams have gone on to win the series from a similar start. More celebrations at the Springbok 7's end-of-year function and one player honoured, Branko Dupria, who had joined the Box 7's role of honour when he made his 35th tournament appearance for South Africa in Port Elizabeth. He became only the seventh player to do so. The others, of course, were Frankie Horn, Fabian Juries, Marius Skuman, Kyle Brown, Chris Dry and Zondile Stick. Branko Dupria is what Springbok 7's is all about. Determination, commitment and humility. He might be one of the smallest guys around on the circuit, but also one of the toughest. Yeah, definitely. It's an awesome feeling uh, winning the tournament in, in PE in front of your home crowd and to play with this bunch of guys. Uh, it's a very, I'm very honoured to be playing with these guys and enjoying every moment with them. It's an awesome feeling and to be part of the, uh, those seven guys that uh, have received their, their, their painting for 35 tournaments and all that. It's an awesome feeling to be part of it and to enjoy every moment of it. Not much guys uh, get the opportunity to, uh, to achieve that, so I'm going to enjoy every moment of it. The wind in Port Elizabeth capped an incredible calendar year for the Springbok Sevens. In this time, they made five cup finals, won three titles, and of course, there was the gold medal win at the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow. The stage has been set for another great year in the history of Springbok Sevens rugby. Next up, Wellington and Las Vegas early in February. We leave you with some of the lighter moments. Goodbye. You know, I, I, oh, sorry. Um, I'm trying to find the right word there. And hopefully, we can be successful as well. Twenty-four sevens on the road with the Springbok Sevens was brought to you by Absa, sponsors of Springbok Rugby.